John Brown was born on May 9, 1800. His parents were Calvinist Puritans and anti-slavery. At a very young age, John Brown was taught that all men were equal, never understanding what that really meant, until he witnessed a young black slave boy being beaten with iron rods, and that ignited his first initial hatred for slavery. In 1824, he married Diane Lusk and had six children. She died giving birth to the sixth child in 1832. John Brown falls ill and loses business. A year later, he met and married a 16-year-old girl named Mary Ann Day and went on to have an additional 13 children. He moved his family to Ohio and opened a tannery with Zenas Kent. However, the financial crisis of 1839 causes them to fold. He loses four more children to dysentery and moved to Massachusetts. It wasn't until the death of Elijah Lovejoy, who was murdered because he was outspoken against slavery, and this is when he vowed to abolish slavery forever. While he was in Massachusetts, John Brown joined the Free Church, now known as St. John's Congressional Church, where he met fellow abolitionists such as Frederick Douglass and Sojourner Truth. This is where Brown really gets involved with the Underground Railroad and helping slaves escape to freedom. When the Fugitive Slave Act passed in 1850, it was a law which mandated that authorities in free states aid in the return of escaped slaves and imposed penalties on those who aided in their escape. Outraged by this, Brown responded by putting together a militant group to prevent slaves captured called the League of Gileadites. When the Kansas-Nebraska Treaty came out, several men led by Sheriff Sam Jones formed a posse of 750 men known as the Border Ruffians. They attacked the town of Lawrence and burned buildings, robbed merchants, killed innocent people all in an attempt to force Kansas to become a pro-slave state. When John Brown heard of this, he immediately gathered a group of men and made his way down to Kansas, obviously arriving too late. As he made his way to Lawrence, Brown and his men ran across a group of five border ruffians. Although he never took claim to this, he murdered them all. This was known as the Potawatomi Massacre. A group of Missourians led by Captain Henry Pate captured John Brown's sons, John Jr. and Jason, and destroyed the Brown family home. Brown and his 29 men were highly outnumbered. However, John Brown truly felt God was on his side, and they won the battle, known as the Battle of Blackjack. This battle happened on June 2nd. Brown forces Pate to sign a treaty to exchange Pate and his men for his son's return. Brown was highly disappointed when his sons were not returned until September. The retaliations would go back and forth for three months. This time period was known as Bleeding Kansas. The governor of Kansas orders all warring parties to disband. Brown goes back to Massachusetts. Brown raises funds and advocates for his fight against slavery. He meets a group of men known as the Secret Six, who were the ultimate funders of his missions. As he rallies and gathers forces, he meets an ex-military man known as Hugh Forbes. They thought of a plan to raid on Harper's Ferry. The idea was to raid an armory in Harper's Ferry, Virginia, and arm all black men with weapons so they could free themselves. However, Brown and Forbes argue over pay, and Forbes exposes his plan for Harper's Ferry. Because of this, the Secret Six disband, and Brown makes his way down to Virginia with a small group of men. On his way down to Harper's Ferry, Virginia, Brown helps slaves escape through the Underground Railroad. He runs into Frederick Douglass and reveals his plan for Harper's Ferry, and Douglass advises against it. Not only does he advise against it, but he informs all black men to avoid any recruitment solicitations by Brown. Brown makes his way to Harper's Ferry with a group of 21 men on a plan that originally called for 4,500. Initially, the invasion to Harper's Ferry was very quiet. They found the town unguarded, and they gathered the nearby farmers and kept them captive.
A train arrives and throws Brown off his tracks. And unfortunately, the first casualty of Harper's Ferry was a man named Hayward Shepard. He was shot and killed, and ironically, he was a free black man. For some unknown reason, Brown let the train go, and they went off and informed the authorities. The townspeople of Harper's Ferry formed a militia and started attacking Brown and his men. And the first casualty of Brown's men was Jeremiah Anderson. The town's militia kill and throw some of Brown's men over a bridge and force Brown and his remaining men into the firehouse. While in the firehouse, Brown sends his son and another man outside to surrender with a white flag, but the townspeople shoot them. Colonel Robert E. Lee and his brigade show up to Harper's Ferry and seize Brown and his remaining men. Five of Brown's men escape, including Brown's oldest son, Owen Brown. Brown and the men that were captured were arrested. Brown stood trial and was charged for murdering four whites and a black, conspiracy with slaves to rebel, and treason against Virginia. On October 27th, the trial began and the doctor had pronounced the still wounded Brown fit for trial. On November 2nd, after a week long trial and a 45 minute deliberation, Brown was found guilty on all the charges. This is where he wrote his famous speech that ended in saying, If deemed necessary, I should forfeit my life for the further furtherance of ends of justice and mingle my blood further with the blood of my children when the blood of millions in the slave country whose rights are disregarded by wicked, cruel, and unjust enactments. I submit, so let it be done. After the verdict, he was sentenced to death by hanging. Several people came out and protested against the hanging. The Civil War leader, Frederick Douglass, wrote his zeal in the cause of his race was greater than mine, and I could live for the slave and die for them. Abraham Lincoln called Brown crazy, but understood his purpose of his mission and what he did. It is said that John Brown is the initiator of the Civil War. Martyr or maniac, you decide.